You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Elderberry, elderberry, elderberry. You're hearing about it everywhere, aren't you? And if you're not, I hope you are because this stuff is totally amazing. It's great to have on hand for cold and flu season, And that's totally not the topic of today's episode on the Herbalist Path. Today, I wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about the plant. Did you know that the elderberry comes from a shrubbery called elder? It's true. And I want to share some of the history and lore and great stories behind this lovely, elegant elderberry shrubbery with you. Welcome to the Herbalist's Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there's an herbalist in every home, again, with your host, clinical herbalist, Melissa Mutterspa. Hey, elegant elder. It's everywhere you want to be, right? I mean, seriously, elderberry syrup is all the rage these days. And with good reason. I mean, it's cold and flu season. Plus, we are in this global pandemic thing with cases definitely back on the rise. It's absolutely no wonder why people are talking about elderberry syrup. It's a total powerhouse when it comes to boosting your immune system and helping to fight off viruses. But here's the thing. Elderberries come from a beautiful shrubbery, and there's a lot more to this shrub than just its berries. So I thought that today it'd be a lot of fun to just touch on some of the history and the lore of this amazing and beloved shrubbery. I hope that you join along in this little adventure and learn a little bit more other than syrup, 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 berry, berry, berry. So much more going on in this plant. So a lot of the information I'm about to share with you, I'd love to give great thanks to Matthew Wood for. I got a lot of this info from his book of herbal wisdom and his Earthwise Herbal book. And some of the info I also got from Alma Hutchinson's or Hutchins' book, Indian Herbology of North America. 
anyways, they had a lot of great history to share, and I thought it would just be a really good time to talk about some of that stuff. So when you go to your next party and somebody's talking about elderberry syrup and how it helped their kid recover from a cold or something, you can be like, yeah, but it's so much more. You could say something like, did you know that the elder shrubbery was referred to as the Hilde mother or the elder mother? And the elder mother was the queen of the underworld or a fairyland. It was known that the elder shrubbery was the doorway to the underworld or the magical fairy realm. So whatever you do, don't tell my daughter or let her listen to this episode or she'll be sitting at the foot of an elder shrubbery waiting for the fairies to let her in until, I don't know, forever. (laughs) It was also said that that little elder mother, she lived in the tree and that is where you could enter her home. Thus, people were not to fall asleep under the tree or to make baby cradles from the wood, for it was said that the fairies loved to kidnap human souls for sport, and they would find you under the uh, elder shrubbery. You could get whisked away into another world never to return. You can maybe let my daughter know that part because she's still at the young, sweet age where she never wants to leave my side for too long unless it's to Nana's house. So we might be safe now <laughs> to let her know. Um, another really cool thing about elder is it was an absolute staple in European peasant medicine. And it was known as the medicine cabinet of the people. And it was always ready for immediate use. People would use its roots, the stems, leaves, flowers, barks, and the berries. There was always a way to get medicinal benefits from elder. The European peasants would also place offerings at the foot of the little elder mother each spring in hopes that she would provide good medicine and bountiful crops for their garden, as if the elder mother would be the guardian of the rest of the garden, looking over all of the plants and the fairies and making sure that everything would be lovely and produce great medicine and food. It was considered to be, uh, it could be fatal to harvest from the plant without making an offering to the elder mother. So a lot of the people would let the elder mother know part of their offering was that their body would eventually return back to the earth. Pretty heavy, right? And then here in North America, the Native Americans would place offerings by each plant when they harvested them for use. This is a practice I encourage many people to do if I ever teach them how to do any wild crafting. And I think it's a lesson that all of us today should heed. Like the offerings and the respect for the plants and other natural resources that this beautiful planet provides us need to be more present. We don't need to just take, take, take. Let's give, give, give too, right? Because she's giving so much everything in life to us. So think about that when you're eating your food or when you're taking your medicine or if you're going out to harvest mushrooms right now or whatever you may be doing, you know, place some kind of offering, whether it's a song or a piece of your spirit or um, more medicine or more nutrients or you're replacing the seeds so that that plant can grow better for future generations. These are just just things that I think are great to think about as you go along in the world of harvesting and, you know, the world of our planet. <laughs> So some other cool things to be known about Elder and its history is that it was believed that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross made of Elderwood and that after his death, he went to the underworld. And in England, the people would place Elderwood crosses on graves in hopes that it would bring peace to the person that had recently deceased. They would also place these elder crosses on doors and windows to disappoint the charms of the witches. <laughs> I just think this stuff is, is really a lot of fun. Hopefully you do too. Did you know that not only has all this cool history and lore happened with the elder shrubbery, 
But as I said in the beginning, it's everywhere you want to be, and it's so true. It's actually an invasive species, right? So in the book written by Stephen Buhner, Herbal Antivirals, he quotes, a factor that I have found a primary indicator of strong medicinal action, the invasive status of the plant. Four, interestingly enough, many of the strongest antibacterial and antiviral plants are invasives, end quote. I just find that to be a really cool thing to note as we all go out there and and learn to make peace with our planet and make medicine from plants that are provided by this beautiful earth and to do it in a very respectful way and, you know, pay attention to where you're at and what's going on. It's so important. So I want to talk a little bit more about elder and the actual species. And the one that is most commonly used for medicinal properties is Sambucus nigra or black elder. And this one is really, really prevalent around Europe. Um, The entire Sambuca species can be found in North America, Europe, Western Asia, Africa, New Zealand, Australia, and many of the Pacific Islands. It's almost like Mother Nature's out there, like, begging us to use these incredible plants as medicine to help us heal, but even more so to help her heal. I think that's pretty damn cool. So here in the States, we do have a few other Sambucus varieties. We've got Cerulea, or the Blue Elder. We've also got the Red Elder, Sambucus racemosa. And the Red Elder isn't the best one to use for medicine for the berries. Um, You can use the flowers in the spring, though, for the Red Elder. So the word Sambucus comes from the Latin word Sambuca for the pan pipes. And these were a musical instrument that were actually made from the hollow stems of the elder shrubbery. Pretty freaking cool, right? And in Iceland, where they are totally into the fairy world and totally believe in it, that it is said that the most haunting music is made by the elder wood, the pan pipes. So the tree is also associated with Pan, or the lord of the underworld. The elder shrubbery, shrubbery, I just love the word shrubbery, (laughs) and it's a plant I love to see winter, spring, summer, and fall. It makes great medicine no matter the time of the year, and it's... You know, I'm a firm believer that one of the best parts of plant medicine is just simply being with the plant, creating that incredible bond and relationship and the knowingness that you can like become one and feel that plant's presence. I walk by some of my favorite elder shrubs in the winter and I know exactly who they are, even without their leaves, their flowers and berries being present. And I can do this if it's a new elder shrubbery that I don't walk by on the regular. They've got these really, really woody stems, and they've got, like, this kind of acne-like looking little pockmarks all over their stems, and um, they can be quite brittle little stems, so that's one of the things that I notice, and, you know, it always brings me so much joy when I walk by them in the spring, and I start seeing their beautiful leaves just begin to open up. Their leaves um, can also be used for various aspects of healing. One of the comp- excuse me, <laughs> one of the common ones is to help the speed the healing of wounds and other skin issues. Um, you can make like a salve from the fresh leaves if you infuse it into an oil, which is pretty. Sweet. I think a lot of people forget about that. You can also use it to like speed the healing of bruises and sprains and strains. Um, they can be a great expectorant for you, which will help you get rid of like all the nasty phlegmy junk that may come up during a nasty cold or cough. May not be the best expectorant for you you to use, but if it's what you've got around, you could certainly try it. Um, though. Be aware, it's also a purgative, meaning that it will help you expel waste right out of your derriere. (laughs) It's kind of important sometimes. Not pretty, but important. 
So then, after those leaves start popping out, out come these lovely little white creamy umbels of tiny little flowers that are just so great and make me smile so much in the springtime because then I know that more great plants are coming around, right? So, you know, there are quite a few people that find the flowers to have a, a very funky smell, including Shakespeare himself, who referred to this plant as the stinking elder. <laughs> but they can also be great medicine during a cold or flu. So they are what's called a diaphoretic plant. So, so that's going to mean that they're going to help your body to sweat and could be really nice and beneficial during times of fever or something along those lines. Um, help you release some heat. And then, of course, there's the berries, the berry, berry, berries that are just amazing, amazing, amazing and have all kinds of antiviral properties to them. They are incredible and their syrup is super yummy. Easy to get into your kiddos and their little Tommy if that's what you need. And speaking of elderberry syrup, I do have a recipe available for you if you want. You can go ahead and get a free download of it. I'll put a link in the show notes, but I think if you just go to like the herbalistpath.com elderberry syrup recipe, you will find a way to get that recipe to your inbox. Um, and it's just so yummy. It's such a good thing to have on hand around this time. And anyways, I, I hope you appreciated hearing just a little bit more about this elder shrub and, you know, not just the elderberry syrup. I'm glad people love the elderberry syrup. I really, really am because this stuff is epic. But there's so much more going on there. So I thought it was fun to share that kind of information. I know it's a lot of fun for me to read up on it. So if you dig this podcast, please do me a huge favor. Subscribe to it. Share it with your friends. And head on over and give me a review. I love five stars. It makes me feel good and it helps Apple know that we're good and it helps other people to see us a little better. So if you're up for it, I'd be oh so grateful. One more thing before I go and wish you an incredible day. I wanted to let you know that we're opening up a new Facebook group and I'm going to be popping in there doing quick little live classes, just talking about herbs, maybe teaching you how to make some things and hanging out and you'll get to share your herbal creations with your newfound friends in the group. So if you're into that kind of thing, join me over at Facebook, the Herbalist Path group. We're just opening it on October 13th is the first day it's going to be open. So we're going to have a lot of fun there. I can't wait to share some herbal stuff with you. I can't wait to hear from you about what kind of creations you're making and just join in a community where we're on a mission to inspire a movement for there to be an herbalist in every home again. Because we need this, right? And now go have a beautiful day. This has been The Herbalist's Path. We're so glad you could join us today. If you'd like to get a head start on your elder adventures, head over to mountainmels.com to pick up a DIY elderberry syrup kit or a lung loving immune boosting bundle, which includes the syrup kit plus two of our herbal teas to give you and your syrup more immune boosting love. Thanks for listening and for supporting our mission. Together, we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. Wishing you all a lovely day. Bye for now. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the elecampane to the comfrey and the arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. 
And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.